All right, so we are going to <clears throat> kind of start our new unit, but it's kind of like a review from geometry. You should have some background knowledge. Um, and this is going to be about right triangle trigonometry. And so trigonometry. What we do is this is kind of dealing with... Um, triangles and so say we've got a triangle that looks something like this and we have a right angle so this box in the corner is our right angle we're going to look at everything from the perspective of this angle which we're going to call theta okay so this is our reference angle right here theta uh your hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degrees so your hypotenuse is always across from 90 degrees. Next to your reference angle is what we call adjacent, which means next to. And then across from the reference angle is the opposite. So there are certain trig ratios that we've developed called sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And the way that we remember these is through so ga toa. So again, if I look at sine, S stands for sine. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, O over H. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent so again that's in reference to this triangle now another way that you can think about cosecant secant and cotangent is that they are reciprocals so again what does reciprocal mean reciprocal means that you flip your numerator and your denominator so it's the same as cosine and cosine and secant are similar they're just reciprocals they're flip-flops Tangent and cotangent are similar because they are reciprocals. So if we look at an example, let's say we've got a triangle that looks like this. We've got a right angle. We've got a side of 5, a side of 12, and then our reference angle is this angle right here. So always go through and label what you have. So across from here is opposite. Across from 90 is my hypotenuse. And then next to it is adjacent. So we know the adjacent and the opposite sides. Good news is, is we still know how to find the third side using Pythagorean's theorem, where I like to think about it as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So that helps you determine where you plug in the numbers you know. We know 5 and 12 are the two legs. They're not the hypotenuse. So 25 plus 144, um, this is going to equal 169 equals my hypotenuse squared. How do you get rid of a square? You take the square root. Therefore, our hypotenuse is equal to 13. So now we have enough to plug in. So if we had to solve for the six trig functions, again, this could all change if your reference angle changes. This is our reference angle. So we're going to find sine, cosine, and tangent to start. Sine is opposite soka toa, opposite over hypotenuse. 12 over 13. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, if we wanted to find cosecant, secant, and cotangent, we got to take the inverse. So we're going to flip. Again, now it's hypotenuse over opposite. Now it's hypotenuse over adjacent. And now it's adjacent or yeah, now it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So they're just inverses. Okay. 
Okay, so we also have to talk about some special right triangles. It's like 30, 60, 90 triangles. So if we look at, um, well, actually, let's do one more example first. So if theta is an acute angle of a right triangle when sine is pi or 4 over 7. So we're getting, in, we're getting a question. It says, all right, sine of theta equals 4 over 7. What is tangent theta? So I always recommend that you draw the triangle. So I'm going to start by drawing this just reference triangle. I'm going to pick a spot. So I'm going to pick this to be my reference angle. This is going to be theta. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if I label it opposite over hypotenuse, that means this side is 4 and this side is 7. But tangent, so if we think about so toa opposite over hypotenuse tangent uses opposite which is great we know that but we don't know the adjacent yet so we got to figure out what adjacent is so we're going to use pythagorean's theorem leg squared plus leg squared four squared plus i don't know what the adjacent is but i know my hypotenuse is seven squared super important that again you put this what you know in the right spot otherwise you won't get the correct answer uh, if you subtract 16 on both sides, you should get 33. Therefore, our adjacent side is the square root of 33. So tangent equals opposite, which is 4, over adjacent, which is the square root of 33. The problem is we have a radical sign in our denominator. So we need to move it out of the way. So how we do that is we multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. And so we get an answer of 4 square root 33. And square root multiplied by square root cancels out. And we're just left with 33 on the bottom. So tangent theta is 4 square root 33 over 33. Um, we've, we've got special right triangles. There's two types. There is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. All right. So the 30, 60, 90 is a reference to the angles. So we have a 30 degree here, a 60 degree here. So everything gets compared to your 30 degree. So again, across from the 30, I'm going to call this my short side, my short leg. Let's write it out, short leg. And this is going to be called X. Across from my 60 degrees is going to be called my long leg. And we're going to say that whatever the X is, we're going to multiply it by the square root of 3. Or we're going to take our short leg, SL for short leg, and we're going to multiply it by the square root of 3. I don't, we don't care what it is. Whatever that short leg is, we're going to multiply it. And then across from 90 is always my hypotenuse. And we're going to take our short leg and multiply it by 2. So 45, 45, 90 is a special type of triangle called the isosceles triangle. So again, if this is 45 and this is 45, we're going to have two sides that are the same. So we're going to call this leg. We're going to call this leg. And across from 90 is my hypotenuse. If leg is x and leg is x, the hypotenuse is the leg times the square root of 2. x times the square root of 2. All right, so if we get an example, let's say, hey, we've got... Well, let's draw it a little bit different. Let's do a long way this way. Okay, so we've got 30 degrees. And then we got X and 8. So we want to try to figure out X. Okay, well, I know, again, that my hypotenuse is 8. And my hypotenuse is going to be double what my, my small leg or my short leg is. So if I'm looking at this, okay, 2X... I want to get x, okay? 
So really, that's like saying this side is four. It's half of my hypotenuse. But I want to figure out what, th what this is. I shouldn't have necessarily used X here. I should have used maybe Z or something, something else. Because this is what I'm trying to solve. But I know that what I have to do is take my short leg and multiply it by the square root of three to get my long leg. So I'm gonna say that my answer is four square root three because it's across from 60 degrees. <clears throat> uh, you've also definitely solved, like used the calculator to help you solve some of these problems. So if we look at the example, let's see here. A, C, B, A, B equals 15, and C, this is 28 degrees. Notice, okay, sides or vertices are capital letters, side lengths are lowercase letters, okay, that, that matters. So from our reference angle, which is right here, I'm going to say... I have to label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So I know the adjacent. That's helpful. So we're going to say, all right, well, let's try to figure out. <clears throat> if I wanted to try to figure out what A was, okay? A uses opposite, and I'm going to use the adjacent because I know what it is. So I'm thinking, so... Toa, which function uses opposite and adjacent, and that's tangent. So we could say that this to solve this, we would say tangent of 28 degrees equals opposite, which is A, over adjacent, which is 15. All I'd have to do to get A by itself is multiply the right side and the left side by 15. So if I type in 15 tangent 28, I'm going to get <clears throat> whoa. Oh, I just did 15 times 28. 15 tangent 28. I was like, that's a really, really big number. A equals about approximately 7.97, let's call that 6. Seven, well, 7 7.98, how about that? 7.98. So that gets me A, but now I gotta solve B. And so now I'm thinking, hmm, I can use adjacent again, but now I gotta use hypotenuse. So which function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? That's cosine. So I'm gonna say cosine of 28 degrees equals adjacent, or what was it? Yeah, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is C. The problem this time is C is on the bottom. So what do I need to do? I need to ah, multiply both sides by C, multiply by C, so that this cancels out. So C times cosine 28 equals 15. And then I'm going to divide both sides by cosine of 28. So this cancels out here. So I say C equals 15 over cosine 28, which if you look at where we started to where we ended, what did we do? We basically just flip-flopped those two. But I wanted to show you how we got there. So 15 divided by cosine 28 is about 16 point, well, 16 point, Nine eight, I guess. Nine nine, sixteen point nine nine. All right, so that I believe helps us solve. And then if we had to get, uh, we know that this is ninety degrees. And then if we just did, triangles always have one hundred and eighty. So if we do one eighty minus ninety minus twenty eight, we could figure out that this angle is sixty two degrees too. Um, all right, let's just talk one last concept, angle of elevation and angle of depression. So basically, 
if you were, say you were looking up at a building, all right, so if we were standing right here and you were looking up, this is the ground. Uh, we would call this angle right here the angle of elevation. But if you were standing on top of the building looking down, so let's pretend you're right here. Again, this is your eyesight. This is your horizon. This spot right here is called the angle of depression because it's going down. So again, wanted to see, it's really if you're looking up your elevation. So again, even for this picture, this stick figure guy, he really, his eyes should really be at the ground level. His eyes need to be at the ground level. Um, and so that's just, you may get something that, uh, um, is giving you an example. So a parasailer is attached to a boat with a rope 300 feet long. So the rope is 300 feet long. Uh, the angle of elevation from the boat to the parasailer is 48 degrees. So again, we got a boat right here. That means this angle is 48 degrees. His rope is 300 feet long. They want to find out how high he is up in the air. All right. Labeling from my reference angle. From my reference angle. Opposite. Hypotenuse. Adjacent. What uses opposite and hypotenuse? It's sine. So sine of 48 equals H over 300. Multiply both sides by 300 to get H by itself. And you should get about 223 feet.